afternoon thank you for being on time uh, i already see 420 parents um, in the stream you just wait maybe 2 to 3 minutes more before starting the session um, and then we can start immediately in the uh, live chat unless there is a question and once you have asked a question don't repeat uh, the question multiple times it becomes difficult to um, uh, hold the Q&A session so once you have typed your question uh, please we'll get to it please do not repeat the question again and again and um, again do not use the chat box for general chatting it's more only for the Q&A Thank you, parents, again, once again, for being on time. Uh, once again, I request everyone not to use the um, chat box for general chatting. Please use it only for the Q&A. Um, so I'd like to first call upon uh, Mr. Rohan, but our CEO to uh, CFO to uh, address the audience. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope all of you are doing well and uh, your, our children are also doing well and everyone is looking forward to the school reopening. It has been a difficult two years and we are still sincerely praying that things come back to normal and at least in the coming months and years, at least in the coming year, we will have regular schooling. Most of you are well educated and you must have read a lot of articles about how the education sector is one of the most badly hit sector, not because of the financial aspect of it, but because of the academic aspect of it. Most of the schools have tried their best, like us, they have also worked very hard to ensure that their school children get whatever best education possible online. But all said and done, we know as that maybe academic gap is something which can be taken care of. It is something maybe when the schools have already taken care of, especially because of the help from the parents, especially educated parents like in our school who were work walked hand in hand with us whenever we wanted your help we wanted your, you to do something which for your child though you were busy you had your own work your own problems in spite of that you have taken complete onus of the work and you have worked very sincerely with the teachers to ensure that your child gets the best out of whatever is possible so I am sincerely thankful to you parents for being with us. Otherwise, this would have been impossible for the pre-primary kids. Without your help, it was no way, however good our program may be, without your help, we would have been zero. So first of all, my heartfelt gratitude for this. Coming back to the problem of the 
uh, issues that have been created by school not working as i said you are aware it is not only the learning gaps that we are uh, academic gaps that we are worried about it is the non academic gaps especially in the pre primary section that we are worried about because if you have seen our the kind of activities our teachers have done you may have realized in the last two years that pre primary education is not about learning a b c d there are a lot of other things which go along with the academics there is the we have the we have to talk about we have to be very careful about the de development of the child in this particular year because as we all know that these are the most crucial years in a child's learning this is the foundation years if the foundation is weak there is going to be trouble in the higher classes that is what we all know and it is not only a b c d or a for apple or or, or write, write learning of four sentences or writing of four sentences there are a lot of other things like the, the psychomotor development cognitive development which we have we have to pay a lot of attention to because these things cannot be taught by giving you a pen of a child a lecture or a pen and a paper this has to be done through various activities and very guided activities knowing that with each activity what exactly we want from the child to happen so this is where i think the major problem we are expecting that there are a lot of other developmental issues which will be there so that's why schooling to start as soon as possible is very very important i know the fears that are there you know about the uh, we know about all those things but somewhere we have to start we have to get our children back to school and we have to get our heart to understand that whatever the fear in our mind we have to also understand that this is also a, this is the the hand holding towards a normal schooling is going to be difficult for these children because there is a huge gap children who are were in nursery are going to go to first standard directly so and it is a completely different scene in then there is a lot of preparation which happens when the child is in regular schooling by going to the primary there are a lot of things that happen a lot of activities if you had your children previously moving from senior to first i think those parents would be aware that how the elder elder children come to the class they sit with the uh, senior kg children they spend time with the so the first standard second standard children actually come to this class so there is a lot of hand holding and lot of interaction where the child is looking forward to go to the higher class where it is a different school we we uh, a lot of uh, talk about teachers keep talking about having different teachers for different stress and with some subjects a lot of things that happen so that's why it is important that now at least we are able to uh, bring our children and you cannot suddenly push your child to the class and say now sit for 3 hours 5 days a week and this is your life suddenly it has to be a very gradual process so that's why as you are aware we are doing it in a very small way the reason behind is one of this is that that i cannot directly push our children there are a lot of issues like we have to understand we are understanding that there is a problem of transportation people who are far off they have to go come back again after dropping the child again come back in the after some time again pick the child and go so this asking you to do it on a day to day basis i don't think is fair on our part when we are not able to give the bus service because of our own problems our, our uh, pre primary heads uh, will be uh, speaking more about it i don't want to take too much time about it but you also i also like to talk about understand that uh, you know that nep was rolled out and uh, there were a lot of subtle changes though nep per se is uh, in the most of the private school doesn't make major difference because you have to understand that nep is for the whole country and you are in the 2% or the 3% of the parents of the or the children who are going to elite schools who have a, who are having many of these things almost say 60 70% of the things what is is in the nep or with the government is planning 
is already is already a part of your child's life and has been a part for the in the schools in big schools like us for the last maybe 15 20 years because if you say small thing if i say they have given the emphasis on pre primary now we have been telling the government for the last 15 years baba put your emphasis in pre primary your children are not able to do the government ch school children are not able to manage because they don't have a pre primary how do you expect the child who has no pre primary background to come and compete with a private school child who has got 3 years of solid bag solid foundation there is going to be a gap because you are not paying attention to the pre primary so there like there are not many things which are already done but there are many things which are new in that and we felt that we should be going and we were actually in the planning process of doing that to making some changes not more in the pre primary but more in the primary section moving it from the pre primary to the primary so which now uh, because of the two year gap we were not able to do much because at present the priorities were different so now we have uh now is the chance now we have planned that we have to move forward and especially the we are when we are calling you that we will be uh, the principal the, our head will be speaking to you about what is the learning gap and what kind of gaps we are expecting we do not know because your child has been with you only when he comes to school we will come to know whether actually he was reading or whether you were reading for him whether he was writing or you were writing for him we do not know anything so that gaps we will have to find out the gaps because unless the gaps are filled up we do not think that we will be able to do justice in the future years so the idea of calling is all this thing which will be again discussed in little more detail by the principals by the head of the schools and our idea is that we require to work very carefully know what is happening and make our changes in our plans for the month of march april give you all kind of support that is required in march april the child which will be requiring support what kind of individual support we can give whether after school before school online whatever we do not know till we see your child so that is the idea that at least let the star child start coming and that is why we have segregated the online and offline the online is going to be online and offline is a day where we are going to concentrate on all these things where we felt we want to identify the gaps which are there and that is what is going to happen that basically in the one day that is when if time permits and if required we will increase the number of days see the situation how it goes and all those things will happen so but the most important worry for us is though for for this implementation of the nep and our new programs which we are coming out with the in the primary section or at least trying to roll out something in this year we don't want to shock the children with something new suddenly but we will have to start rolling up rolling out things to make the changes that are required uh, to ensure that in the next 5 6 years when the children come to secondary stage or the uh, or the higher primary stage or secondary stage they are prepared for the changes that are going to come in the next 7 8 10 years we have to do the planning now only then they will be able to absorb that changes so there is a lot of things which i don't think is the correct platform to share with you today and bore you with but there is a lot of work going on behind the scene teachers and heads are continuously we are meeting to plan all our things but uh, the most important worry for us is the children who are going from senior to first because as i said these are the children who came to nursery and who actually in nursery had their we have their own program you know the program where a lot of things are is the preparation for the actual studies actual academics is what happens in nursery that happened but then after that there is a huge gap now this child is going to go into first standard where english hindi marathi science maths all these things come up so it's a big worry for us i don't want to scare you we are there for you but i want you to understand that we are also coming from a place that where we know our worries and we are planning a lot of things we require because you are we feel that whatever it is there will be gaps in the first standard 
and for that we will have to give our children support there is not going to be any option if we are not able to provide a proper support there is going to be trouble as the child grows up because the foundation is going to be weak so there are changes that we have thought about and uh, you will understand uh, we are in the planning stage so i don't want to go too much into it but it is not going to be easy it is going to be a uh, um it is going to cost us something but we have decided that we sh- will be able we will manage it okay somehow we will manage it whatever happens we just our job to ensure that the children are prepared properly in first standard so that at least from second standard onwards they are in track so th- there are going to be changes and there are going to be uh, i just want to assure you that making you not only aware of what is the problem but also assuring you that we are thinking about it very seriously you don't require to worry yourself we only require your support as you are given at support so far give us support in the future also don't ab school chalu ho gaya ye tumhara bachcha pakad lo don't do that because we will not be able to manage with that uh, attitude this hand holding will be required we will be adding staff we have that is the one of the plans that we will require to add staff in the primary just like in the pre primary we will require to add staff so that this especially the children whom where we find problems we are some, somebody is there right in that school time also apart from you being there at home here also teacher handling 40 students we find uh, may not be a good prudent thing to do in the next year for at least for otherwise our teachers are capable of managing so many years they have managed there has been no problem but now it's a scenario is different so we will be doing our work uh, we require your support uh, please cooperate with the teachers and the principals and uh, try to as we try to bridge the gap put some effort at, at the same time not overburdening the children we have to be careful about that also that uh, if you have not eaten for two days we can't give you all the two days food together on the third day so we have to give it in whatever the child can absorb so it is not a solution ki tuition teacher rakh diya us upar se tuition teacher ke upar aur ek tuition teacher rakh diya and problem is going to be sorted out no it doesn't work like that it it is not going to work like that it has to be a slow and steady process but i am sure that the way you have cooperated with us in the last two years with your cooperation we will definitely be able to do uh, achieve our goals we have very clear goals we have got a very good team of uh, the teachers and heads as you must have seen during this online uh, classes dedicated people putting their whole heart mind soul everything into their work and with such kind of people around with such kind of parents around and i am very sure that it will be next year also god willing when everything is back to normal we will be able to help our children to come back to their normal self as soon as possible so all the best i will not take uh, i've taken already quite a bit of time so i hope uh, more of your faqs your uh, questions and your doubts will be cleared by this but i just wanted to say hello to you and uh, wanted to uh, solicit your cooperation for the coming days coming year the try to bring the child to school so that we are uh, it may even however difficult it may be so we have made it one day try it. do it for yourself and for your child for and for us okay all the best god bless thank you very much thank you ronta um, i think that uh, must have uh, fooled the parents a lot I think we can continue with the presentation. My Pradeshni uh, uh, ma'am will be taking you through the pres- the pre-primary and Mr. will be taking you through the presentation now. Pradeshni ma'am, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you, Ronit sir, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Ron sir, for having acknowledged the support of our parents and for having taken us to the importance of offline school and the various domains that need to be thanked. tackled um yes after a long wait of almost 2 years we are now eager and excited to welcome our little children back to school 
we are sure the children too are keenly looking forward to being in school. Keeping in mind the current situation, a lot of in-depth planning has gone into reopening the school premises for our children and making it a safe and smooth transition for everyone. The school has always worked in partnership with the parents to provide children a safe and vibrant learning environment. Once again now, we look forward to this transition being a joint effort with our parents so everyone becomes a part of the process and together we can handle all challenges and apprehensions effectively. To begin with, the school has developed elaborate cleaning protocols for the classroom, equipment and school premises, including those used by more than one group. These protocols are aligned with the BMC guidelines. Signs and posters pertaining to health and safety measures will be prominently displayed in the school premises. To conduct the teaching learning transaction ensuring social distancing norms, we have staggered the date for each grade and altered the shift so that children can attend school in small groups. This is the offline schedule plan as of now, where the offline school will be conducted once a week for each grade. Senior KG will have a duration of one and a half hour on Mondays of offline school. Online school will continue other days, that is on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Junior KG duration of offline school is also for one and a half hour on Wednesdays with online school on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. Coming to nursery, we have a one hour duration of offline school and will continue with the online on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. So let's get into further details. Senior KG offline school is on Mondays for a duration of one and a half hour. We will have four batches, two in the morning and two in the afternoon. The timings are 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. to 12 noon. In the afternoon, we have two batches. That is from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. followed by 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. The offline school for senior KG will commence from 31st January moving on to every Monday, that is 7th February and 14th February. Junior KG classes are on Wednesdays with a duration of one and a half hour. This will be divided into four batches, morning and afternoon. The morning batch is divided into 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. to 12 noon. In the afternoon, we have two batches, that is from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m., followed by 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Junior KG will commence on 2nd of February, moving on to 9th and then 16th of February. Nursery classes are on Fridays, which will be a one hour session. This will be divided into four batches again, morning and afternoon. Morning batch is divided into two, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. In the afternoon, we have two batches, 12 noon to 1 p.m., followed by 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Nursery commences from 4th February, moving on to 11th and 18th of February. Further schedule or any other changes will be updated via circulars in the Google Classroom. Please ensure that your child carries a completely filled version of the attached consent form on the first day he or she attends offline schooling. You may take a paper with blanks filled with the required information and the handwritten letter can be sent to the student instead, duly signed. Please note that students who do not carry the consent form will not be permitted to attend the classes.
Parents are requested to arrive in school 10 minutes prior to the time slot provided to your child as per the gate assigned. The gate number to be used for entry and exit will be communicated to you in the Google Classroom by the teachers. The mandatory temperature checks will be conducted at the assigned school staff at the time of entry and the child will be guided to the classroom. Parents will not be permitted to ent enter into the classroom for the safety of the children. They may wait in the waiting room as guided by the staff. Only one adult per household will be permitted in school with the child. Nursery parents will need to wait on the first day of school for the entire duration of the class. Junior KG and senior KG parents can decide to wait as required. Parents who leave the waiting area will be allowed back only 10 minutes prior to dispersal time. Entry in between will not be permitted. Parents will need to display the escort card to the teacher after which the child will be handed over to the parent. This is explained uh, in the next slide. After picking up the child, the parents need to leave the school premises immediately. Student ID cards will be issued to the children on the first day of school. They need to wear it each time they attend the offline school. Escort card is issued to parents for the child's safety and security to ensure the person picking up the child from school is the authorized person. Nursery parents have already received the blank escort cards you need to fill in the relevant details and hand it over to the class teacher on the first day of offline school at the entrance. It will be stamped and written to the parent at the time of dispersal. Escort cards of junior KG children are in the school. The teacher will hand over the same to the parents at the time of entry on the first day of offline school. Senior KG parents will be issued blank escort cards on the first day of offline school. You need to fill in the relevant details and hand it over to the class teacher on the same day or on the next day of school. It will be stamped and duly returned to the parent. Parents must carry the escort card with them each time they come to pick their child from school. Till the escort card process is completed, Parents can show the child's handbook to the teacher while picking up the child. Teachers will guide you regarding the above in the Google Classroom. With respect to the curriculum, the school plans to initially focus on allowing the children to settle into the new environment. Recapitulation of concepts done in online class will be covered at the start during offline school. Stories, songs, picture conversations, games, and light aerobic exercises will be conducted to provide children opportunities for social interaction and building gross motor skills. Offline school will also help us conduct activities to identify gaps, if any, and bridge the gap before the child moves on to the next class. No exchange of any kind of materials like books, worksheets, etc. will be encouraged at the start between the school and the children. In case any materials need to be carried to school, the same will be intimated via LMS. The classroom and all toys and equipment in the class will be regularly sanitized between shifts. So let me answer some of the frequently asked questions. I've got some here for you. What do children need to wear to school? School uniform. Please send your child in school uniform. Please ensure they are well groomed 
with hair neatly tied up, especially for girls. Mask. Mask needs to be worn of the right size and placed correctly to cover the mouth and the nose. Comfortable formal footwear, preferably comfortable shoes. Lastly, the ID card. And what do children need to carry to school? School bag, extra pair of clothes neatly packed, napkin, water bottle, extra mask neatly packed in a Ziploc pouch, pocket size sanitizer if required, materials as per LMS posted in the Google Classroom if any. Kindly make sure all the items are duly labeled, including the mask. Bus service, we hope you'll understand that it would not be viable proposition to provide bus service without the school operating at its full strength. Is offline school mandatory? While attending offline school currently is not mandatory, we would recommend it as children have been missing out on social interaction. Can we change the batch timing? No change in batch timing is allowed since the classes have been divided into groups with a lot of planning and coordination, keeping in mind the COVID protocols. Any changes will disturb the entire schedule. Can we wait and decide to send the consent form next week? Yes, you can do so. However, that will result in the child joining offline school late as the child cannot be permitted to attend offline school without the consent form. Why is the offline class only once a week? The transition from online to offline mode is being planned in a phased manner to allow children time to adapt themselves to the change. Since children are currently comfortable with the online mode, that will continue. Young children find it difficult to adapt to a hybrid mode of learning due to which the same is not encouraged. This gradual phased approach will help the children to transit smoothly. Why not only online classes? Due to the long gap in offline schooling, there may be certain learning gaps we have not been able to identify online. Offline school at least once a week will help us conduct activities to determine these gaps and provide activities, worksheets or bridge this gap before the child moves on to the next class. Parents' help and cooperation to this end is solicited. Offline school will thus help children orient themselves with physical schooling and catch up on missed activities crucial for their cognitive and social emotional development. We request parents to prepare the child and to instill confidence in the child so that he or she looks forward to experience of coming to school. Allow children to openly share their feelings with you and respond to them in a friendly age appropriate manner and provide reassurance in case of any fear or apprehensions. Teach them the correct method to wash their hands to maintain self hygiene. Hand sanitizer can be used only if required and the child can be advised not to use it in class unnecessarily. Guide them to wear a face mask correctly and to keep it on at all times in school. In case of any discomfort, the child can approach the teacher. While children will be excited to meet their teachers and peers, remind them to maintain basic social distancing protocols and refrain from hugging and holding hands with each other. Encourage them to approach their teachers in case of any issue and to follow the instructions provided by the teachers and the staff in school. In case of any past or prevailing health conditions, please keep the class teachers informed in advance. In case a child is unwell, 
or if a family member is unwell, please avoid sending the child to school. Stay calm to avoid spreading your anxiety to the child. In case any child is unwell, we have a nurse available in the school premises. The child will be moved to an isolated area and parents will be contacted. As a school, we assure you that all mandatory safety pr uh, procedures are being followed and staff are trained in the implementation of the protocols to provide a safe environment to our children. Being partners in this process of transition, the school and parents aim to strike the right balance on one hand supporting the learning and well-being of our young children effectively and on the other hand ensuring the health, hygiene and safety of children, staff and the community at large. Thank you dear parents. If you have any doubts and queries you can add it in the chat box and we can move ahead for the Q&A session. Thank you ma'am. Um... Sonia, ma'am, if you could uh, put up the timings on the screen, because that is a question that keeps coming up quite often. So if you could just put that up on the screen, um, that a lot of parents can take that down. Okay, so parents, please take down the timings. I'll In the meanwhile, I'll go through the uh, questions. Uh, again, a request to parents that I've noted down quite a few questions that have come up in the chat box. Uh, if you have seen a similar question in the chat box before, Please don't repeat the question. Again, there'll be it'll be difficult for us to uh, find new questions if there are the same questions repeated again and again. Okay, so the first question uh, that has come up is it's told not to send kids if having cough or cold, but what if it's a, a child's cough is seen, seasonal and he's not affect, infected? Uh, still, in that case, we recommend not sending the child to uh, school. It's just a simple case of safety. We understand that uh, seasonal changes might have uh, uh, led to cough and cold and stuff like that. But regardless, if a child is unwell, we would suggest not sending to school just to be on the safe side. Uh, and I think Ma'am has already mentioned that it's not just the child, but if the immediate family uh, that you're living with has uh, symptoms, it is recommended not to send the child uh, to school. It, you know, uh, education will keep going on. We want the child and the peers as well to be completely safe. All right. Um, so these, some of the questions have been asked uh, before, some have already been answered by ma'am, but I just want to go through these, uh, answer, the, the, go through these questions just to clarify and to uh, reinforce the answer. So ma'am, uh, what do the children have to bring to offline class? Uh, yes, I think we have already spoken about it. If uh, Sonia, could we have that slide, please? So in the FAQs, yes, we have the question. So what do they need to bring to the class? The next uh, slide, this is what they need to wear. So it's the school bag. Uh, you will have to send an extra pair of clothes neatly packed in the bag, a napkin, water bottle, and extra mask, which is kept uh, safely in a Ziploc pouch, a sanitizer if required, and if in future we ask for any materials in the LMS, we will post it in the Google Classroom. So you can refer to that. And uh, here I would even like to add that we have already shared the timing in the Google Classroom. And you can even go through that in detail. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, regarding the extra pair of clothes, there are two questions regarding it. One, uh, is it for senior KG as well? And second, uh, the extra care of clothes can be casual or does it have to be um, a uniform? Yeah. If you have a uniform, if you have an extra pair of uniform, yes, it will be good if you send that. I'm sure we all have two pair, right? We have one pair rather. So you could send that across. Or if it's not available, then you could sign another uh, pair of clothes. This basically is in case the child soils the clothes in school. That's where we need to change the clothes. Great. So I hope that answers the question, uh, parents. It's just for safety sake. Uh, casual clothes are fine if you don't have the um, uniform. Uh, regarding uniforms in uh, general, uh, the reason we insist on it is uh, uh, at least the top is to maintain a sense of uniformity between the children, as in the name, and also um, to give students this idea that they're approaching a formal education center. Right. So if you wouldn't go to office or any formal place 
in floaters or slippers, then we would recommend the children also not come to school in floaters or slippers, right? So there are questions about can child come to school in, in slippers or flip-flops or whatever. We would recommend very strongly against it. Um, a school is an educational place and a certain level of decorum has to be maintained and that comes across in clothing, okay? So, um, yes, so when the child misses school because of the having any kind of symptom or uh, the family having any kind of symptom, uh, will they be given offline uh, teaching or would they just miss the session for the day? Uh, in case your child misses an offline uh, school, uh, there is uh, no issue at all whatsoever. Uh, because all our curriculum is covered in the online schooling and everything is taken care of. But yes, your child will be marked absent on that day in the offline school. Does that yeah, answer so the question? Yes, yes. Yeah. So like ma'am said, everything is covered, uh, everything is covered in um, online schooling. So uh, there's nothing that you have to worry about. We are just uh, reintroducing children to um, reintroducing children to offline schooling. Um, next question is the school uniform, the pants are not fitted, it's tight. What do we do about it? Okay, so as you already mentioned, uh, Ronit sir, uh, at least let them wear the t-shirt. And if uh, the pants are not fitting or the skirts are not fitting, as of now, they can wear uh, any other, maybe a jean skirt or a jean pant, which is close to our school uniform, or maybe any uh, trouser or skirt, which is a black or blue in color, whatever they are comfortable in, in case the, the uniform does not fit the child. Great. And color for shoes as well, some, a lot of uh, No, shoes, we would prefer something. Color, yes, I'll come to that. But in case of shoes, we would prefer something that's formal that would go with the uniform. Ideally, for the pre-primary uh, children, we would prefer shoes. Uh, I mean, we may not insist on black shoes as such, but we don't want, you know, those multicolored shoes, uh, florence scent shoes or shoes with light, uh, you know, that would distract the other students. So let it be as formal as possible and something which is comfortable for your child to spend time in school. Right. So like ma'am said, we're not insisting on any kind of... Uh black shoes or any particular shoe but uh, please do not make it too fancy um, children shouldn't get shouldn't get distracted by um, by any kind of bright colorful light up shoes or anything of that sort we have like i said once again uh, end of the day common sense is your friend uh, if you wouldn't go anywhere um, in any formal place of your office or whatever in certain something then a child shouldn't also be going to school in something that they find uncomfortable um, another question is uh, if we are actually this we have mentioned already. Yeah, so if, you're, if the child is not coming to offline school, like ma'am said, all the curriculum has been covered in the online school. Uh, so that is completely fine. If a working parent is not able to pick up the child, will it be okay to authorize the grandparent or parent of another child from the same bus to pick them up? Uh, yes, uh, we can authorize somebody else, but we have to hand over the escort card with that person's photograph affixed on the escort card and with a letter of authority addressed to the school asking us to hand over the child to that particular person. Okay, so a letter of the authority and the escort card of the child. Um, with the photograph, uh, you know, of the yeah. person who is going to collect. So if it's a grandparent, they can affix the photograph of the grandparent on the escort card at the back. Uh, thus authorizing the grandparent to collect the child from school. Okay, regarding hygiene, I'm sure many good parents uh, have questions about that. So a couple of things I want to cover. Firstly, uh, we have always had very strict protocols regarding hygiene. This is not new. This is not a, a COVID-centric thing. We've always had very strict protocols. Over the last, uh, I think, November 2020, just to give you an idea of how far back it goes, November 2020, we came up with new protocols, uh, which makes cleaning even more of, uh, you know, of a chore for us. But it's something that we all focus on. So don't worry about cleanliness. Uh, what we are using, just so that people are aware, we are using sodium hypochlorite 4 to 6% solutions to clean surfaces. Um, 
we are talking we have separate protocols for the security gate we have separate protocols for the washroom we have separate protocol for every area that a child or a parent will be visiting so don't worry we have very strict uh, cleanliness protocols that have been followed strictly not just now but like i said from november 2020 onwards we have been following these protocols the school might have been closed for the children but uh, the staff we have i've been coming to school since june 2020 so uh, this, we are completely on top of the cleanliness situation so that is something that you don't have to worry about um if you want any more details regarding the same you can always get in touch with the school we will more than happily uh, share the same with you um so yes so don't worry about the um cleanliness protocols uh then we have a question about um okay ma'am has already answered this and this is something that comes up regardless but about changing the time slot ma'am can you go talk a little bit about changing time slots um yes we wouldn't encourage a change in time slot because this planning the schedule has done by taking a lot of care uh, with the covid uh, covid protocol is taken into account and uh, there's a lot of effort that's gone into this planning and hence there will be no change in shifts or batches right so one thing is not recommended at all uh tiffin box it's only an hour so we don't recommend a tiffin box either um there's no need for to pin box please say we wouldn't uh, ma'am is that right i don't uh, yes not... yes our schedule for junior and senior kg is just one and a half hour and for nursery it's only an hour so we will not encourage to pin box in school so parents you can send the children give them something uh, to eat and drink before they enter the school and as soon as they return home you could do the needful Great, great. So I hope that answers the question. But this uh, is nothing that you have to worry about. It's only an hour. Um, okay. Well, we have a can. Oh, there's a question about can we open offline classes for all days? We would love that, but at the same time, we want to build up slowly to it. Uh, so the academy prides itself on not taking rash decisions, and and uh, the rashness here wouldn't be opening all days. But we want children to slowly get accustomed to coming back to school. It has been two years. um uh, most children uh, especially in the pre primary have never attended school before so we don't want to shock them into something that they haven't uh, had before we have want to build into it slowly we want the children to get comfortable we want you to get comfortable parents and uh, that's why we are starting it in this particular manner uh, of one day at a uh, one day in a week um, in sorry one day to week um right so Or would it be possible to wait in the school during the one hour of nursery class? Would it be possible to wait in the school? Yeah, that's, that's actually. Oh, is it possible for the parents to wait in the school uh, while the going on? Yes, uh, as we have made the first day compulsory for nursery parents to wait. Yes, in case on other days they feel that they need to wait, there is a waiting area, and they can wait in the waiting area till the child has completed his duration in the class. and the same goes with junior and senior as well uh if you feel that your child will be comfortable in the class or maybe on some days you feel that you need to wait yes there's a provision of a waiting area and you can wait in the waiting area but it's only that uh, if you leave the waiting area then when you come back it has to be 10 minutes prior uh, to the dispersal time right so um i hope that answers the question there as well um okay this is a question about if the child cries now that is something that is expected from the nursery students actually but priya ma'am i could you take it uh yes uh, rightly said it is expected especially uh, from nursery we are not very sure but we are well prepared so don't worry in case your uh, child is not ready to you know uh, come into the class or need some time to settle you are always around you can be there with your child and only when your child is comfortable you can send your child uh, into the classroom that's the reason why we have this uh, you know uh, phased out you know uh, offline class exactly because we want children to settle and get accustomed to an offline school so this is a settling period so you did not worry we are there we are and we will handle everything together so no worries at all great so like ma'am said it is something that is expected and that teachers are more than capable of uh, handling the situation 
Uh, there's a question here about apart from teachers, uh, who else will be coming in contact with the with the students? So for example, who will be taking the children to the washrooms, etc. Yes, apart from teachers, we have uh, uh, class help. Uh, they are maushis. We call them maushis. So they are there and they are also trained and they've been with us for a long time. And with the COVID protocol, they have been trained about sanitization and how to handle uh, kids. So they are the ones we have for the classroom. We have an assigned maushi and for the washroom. Also, we have an assigned maushi. And uh, yes, the teachers will always be around. Uh, and every all these protocols are taken into care. Uh, some, someone has asked about the vaccination. All staff members at the care group of schools are double vaccinated. Uh, we have ensured it ourselves. So again, that's something that you don't have to worry about. Um, hand wash is available in the washroom, of course, so though you don't have to worry about that either. Um, there's a question about if there any chance from March onwards the offline school starts completely. Um, Firstly, that no, uh, the permission from the government is there. Uh, it's just a question about how we go about it. And like I said, we are planning things on a slower note than, than other schools would be. But again, we want children to be comfortable. We want you parents to be comfortable. And uh, we'll see how the um, you know, offline school reopening, complete reopening goes. But we'll be taking, taking it slow at the time. Um, consent form, yes. So Mama already talked about the content form, and uh, it has been posted in the uh, in the Google group as well, in the Google Classroom as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, right, Mr. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. So you're supposed to write it down um, and fill in the form, uh, fill in whatever blanks there are, or you can take a printout, fill in whatever forms there are, and bring it on the first day. Okay. Once again, on the first day when the child is coming to school, you have to bring the consent letter a physical copy of it. So a lot of people asking about can we email the consent letter? No, it has to be a physical copy of the consent letter. All the details filled, signed, brought on the first day. So if your child is attending the first day itself, then you have to bring it on the first day itself. If your child is not attending the first day, if you decide to uh, bring the child in second or third time, and then that case you can, uh, the, you can bring the consent letter on the second or third time, whenever, but whatever the first day that the child is attending class, you have to bring the completely filled physical copy of the consent letter. Um, regarding shoes, I've already mentioned before, uh, the shoes are, um, you, the two shoes have to be a little formal um, and uh, uh, they can't be too loud or anything of that sort. Other than that, uh, you can wear the children can wear any kind of formal shoes as long as not they're not too loud, basically. Um, uh, I would just like to add here, Your Honor, that could be even a sports uh, uh, show, but just see that your child is comfortable for that one or one and a half hour in school. But yes, we will avoid loud colors. We'll avoid shoes with light. We'll avoid the fluorescent uh, shoes or just floaters or slip-ons. And okay, question about the escort card again. If the kid is not picked up by the escort card person, can someone else pick the child with authority letter and picture on the authority letter for the person picking the child? Uh, escort okay. card is compulsory, yeah. uh, but yes, unavoidable circumstances. If there's nobody to pick up the child, then you can uh, write a letter of authority. Uh, by uh, affixing the photograph of the child who's going, oh, uh, sorry, of the guardian who's going to pick up the child from the school. But uh, yeah, kindly avoid. But yes, in case of, uh, in a special case, it can be done. Right. Um, masks for an hour. An hour is not that long of a time. Uh, we are going to be interesting on masks. Uh, RTPCS, someone asked for RTPCS are not mandated. So we are not asking for RT-PCR tests, but uh, yes, masks will be required. Um, it is only an hour. That's why we're starting off on from very low time. So uh, uh, yeah, so don't worry. Yeah, the masks uh, uh, to it, right? yeah. so. Here, I would just like to add on. Just see that the mask is a comfortable one, not too tight. And you know, you get the mask, which is a little conical in the front where there is space for child to breathe and even talk. Uh, just uh, see that you're using those kind of masks 
and um, uh, yes they, it needs to cover the nose and the mouth that's very important and see that your child is comfortable and avoid tight mask on face yes and uh, finally i think you just end with this one. a lot of parents asking about duplicate escort cards that they don't have the escort cards um so what do they do uh yes on the first day to uh, to school when you come with your children you can uh, approach the school office they will arrange for a duplicate escort card for you but please look for the escort cards if you have it with you and uh, i would recommend that you get the photographs as well on the first day so that you could complete the uh, process you know as soon as the escort cards are handed over to you so as i said nursery parents will be having their escort cards with them junior kg the escort cards are in the school and senior kg will be providing you with new escort cards so i repeat nursery parents you will be having the escort cards with you because it was handed over to you during that admission process junior kg we had collected the escort cards from you with the photographs that's with the school so what we'll be doing on day 1 is we'll be handing it over to you and you can you know uh, you can use it and senior kg we will be giving you a new escort card which you need to stick your photograph sign and return it to school yeah so that's about uh, yeah the escort card i have been asked the question a lot of questions about escort cards i have been asked the question parents regarding fan titles yes of course if anyone has been to school recently you you will have seen that there are uh, uh, more sanitizers than people at the school at this point uh, so there are fan titles here the, re the reason we are requesting the child to get a fan title about if they uh, if you want to send it with them is so that they like when traveling you might require it the child might require it for whatever reason inside the school it's just to uh, for safety sake that we are requesting it Uh, there is of course a sanitizer in school as well. Um, so okay, I think that's all the questions answered uh, about escort cards for the ones that were um, coming up. Oh yes, someone's pointing out gel sanitizers. Yes, gel sanitizers are better than spray sanitizers. Children especially cannot be trusted with spray and sanitizers, as what we have seen. So uh, gel sanitizers are, uh, are are much better. Um, Regarding timings, timings will be put up on the GC, right, in the whole classroom. Uh, yes, it is already put up in the GC, and even the consent form is put up in the GC, so it's available in the Google Classroom. Great. So Thank I you. think that answers most. Yeah, for all three grades. Great for all three grades. That I hope I think that answers all the questions. Once again, for timings, please refer to the Google Classroom. Um, and uh, we will end the session now i think we uh, already gone past our time but uh, thank you parents for a lot of questions lovely questions in fact and uh, we hope you answered most of them and uh, if of course our school office is open you can get in touch with us if you have any more questions the teachers are available the heads are available um if any more questions you can always get in touch with us for um so for now i'd like to take your leave uh, thank you once again uh, for attending and uh, hoping for a really smooth transition from online to offline learning thank you again thank you ronit sir